Hello guys, welcome to the next video on maintenance practice. Uh, this video I'll be talking about uh, splice connectors. So why do we require splice connectors? In order to join two cables together we require the splice connectors. We have got two types of sp uh, splice connectors. One is the butt type and another is parallel type. Now regarding butt type, we generally use two crimp, uh, crimping barrels in butt type whereas in the parallel type we use one crimping barrel now both the crimping barrels in the butt type will be in series whereas in the parallel type as the name suggests it's in parallel now in the butt type one conductor will enter in through the one end and is crimped and the other will be entered from the other end and will be crimped. Whereas in the parallel type, entering of conductors can be from the same end or it, or it can be from the either side. And parallel uh, type of connectors, it should be long enough to crimp both the conductors. Now there are certain restrictions. And the restriction is it is not used for size which is less than number six or if the voltage rating is uh, more than uh, 250 uh, RMS value. It is not used in case of the fire area where there is likely to generate fire. If there is some flexing action in that case we won't be using um, splice connectors and any place where we are required to use thermocouple or coaxial cable we won't be using the uh, splice connectors next the connection between the bonded earth stud and the earth terminal block we won't be using splice connectors and at any other place as specified in the maintenance manual if it is specified we won't be using in those areas the minimum distance between joints in one cable should be restricted to two feet not more than two joints should be in an area or in a length of 10 feet the maximum number of joints possible if the length is up to 20 feet is three then in case of 20 to 200 it is five and more than 200 is eight Splice joint should not be used in area where visual inspection is not possible. Joint, if possible, is positioned at the outside of the loop. Then there is something called stagger joint. If stagger joint is not possible, then the positive separation using insulation or cable clip is done. Joint must not touch one another joint must not touch other ducting joint must not touch other st uh, straps and joint must also not touch other structure so these things we need to keep in mind uh, in in case of the splice can uh, connect this hydraulic crimping tool it is used for sizes where the AWG which stands for American white gauge it ranges from 12 to 000 so you are required to remember when we can use hydraulic crimping tool as it requires high strength and the normal crimping will not be sufficient so that's why we require the hydraulic crimping tool now normal crimping tool will have two jaws which are fixed whereas if we use the hydraulic crimping tool in that case uh, the dies are interchangeable and th th these dies are held within the tool by the use of the uh, retention ball or by the use of allen key screw now we'll specifically look into uh, erma crimping tool Initially, we will try to look into the preparation for the crimping tool. 
Now we need to select the crimping tool of the correct size, die size as per the cable and the terminal size. Then you need to remove the adapter by sliding it out of the dovetail. Next is close the manual valve and to close it we need to turn the valve clockwise. Then we need to stroke the pump lever till the hexagon is disclosed. Then slacken the two screw and then insert the lower die then tighten the screw and the screw should be held below the surface of the ram and then you need to open the valve and then you insert the spigot till the till it is firmly held by the spring loaded ball and then put on the upper dies and then slide back the adapter and the upper die is held by the spring loaded ball Next we will try to look into insertion of die in the AMP crimping tool. Now press the latch to open the tool and then pull the next lock. Turn the thumb knob until the die appears and wire size number is on the rest. Now close the head and rotate the reservoir handle clockwise. <coughs> A sudden decrease in the effort or the force implies that the crimping is done or complete now rotate the servicing uh, sorry rotate the reservoir handle anti clockwise to release the hydraulic pressure ensure that before crimping is carried out cut the cable to the required length using large cutter and never use hacksaw now inspection of crimp joint what we need to inspect Check the correct combination of the cable, the tool, termination and the correct die marks. Check for the correct forming and location of the crimp. Check if the conductor strands are inserted adequately to the barrel. Check for the absence of insulator in the crimp barrel. Check for fracture, flash uh, or any rough or any edges, sharp edges. Check for any sign of damage to the conductor or the insulator and check if the insulation is properly gripped by the insulation uh, crimp. Next is crimping tool maintenance. Lubricate with the light machine oil and if you are using it on daily basis in that case the daily lubrication is required and if you are using it daily but occasional daily in that case you need to carry out to weekly lubrication and if you are using it weekly or monthly in that case uh, or occasionally sorry in that case you need to carry out monthly lubrication remove all the excess oil and check the ratchet to ensure it does not release prematurely clean the bottoming surface of the die and then you need to do the test crimping with maximum load and maximum wire size when the crimping is made squeeze the handle until the ratchet is free and do not release the pressure on the tool handle if clearance between the bottoming surface is greater than 0.001 inch that means the tool must not be used remember this point when we cannot use the tool if the clearance between the bottom surface is greater than 0.001 inches in that case you cannot use that tool next is go no go gauge use the correct type of the go no go gauge use the tool handle fully maintain firm pressure and insert the go no go gauge between the crimping jaw die go no go gauge must pass freely with the jaw in the same position insert the no go gauge and it must not enter the jaw so if it enters that means it is not proper make sure that do not crimp the gauge as it may cause damage to the crimping jaw next is testing of the crimping joint and this is the last topic so we have got two tests one is the voltage test and another is the tensile test now in case of voltage test we are using millivolt drop check at regular intervals now what exactly we check check for all the electrical integrity of the crimp joints uh, in case of a open circuit voltage it must not it should always be lesser than uh, 30 volt 
and the test is carried out between a point adjacent to the forward end of the crimp barrel and a point on the conductor immediately behind the crimp barrel. Regarding the tensile strength, pull it actually and the joy, uh, sorry, the jaws separate should separate at a steady rate of 1 inch to 2 inch per minute and it must not fail below a minimum load. So these are the things we need to keep in mind. Okay, so testing of crimp joints, we need to keep in mind that we have got two ways to test it. One is the voltage test and another is the tensile strength uh, test. Regarding voltage test, what we do is we carry out the millivolt test. What exactly we do, we carry out the uh, millivolt drop test at regular intervals. And then while we do it in case of an open circuit, it must not be less than 30 millivolt, sorry, 30 volt. And it must be carried out between a point adjacent to the forward end of the crimp barrel and a point on the conductor immediately behind the crimp barrel. Tensile strength, we apply axial load. And whenever we are applying axial load, the jaw must separate at a steady rate of 1 uh, inch to 2 inch per minute and the, the uh, load must not fail below the minimum load. The, the load means that the crimp must not fail below the minimum load. So these are the things you need to keep in mind for crimping. Bye-bye.